Hello YouTube, this is Ben Gessel. This may be my last video tonight. It's very late. Um, okay. So... <sighs> here's some thoughts for you guys. Maybe a little bit. Um, what do you do... Or what do you say to someone... When they assume that you don't know something that you actually do know. Or, turns out you're differing, differing opinions on something, but there's someone that's saying that you don't know something. But you do know something. But it isn't a question of knowing something. It's a question of what you think about it. What's your opinion on something? Yeah. Okay, so then um, you have... Anyway, I'm just thinking about different people I've known in my life. Here and there. And thinking, you know, how many times has somebody assumed something about me that was not true? You know, there's something, again, I hate to say it this way, but there's something religious about what I'm talking about here. Uh, even Christian, but also other religions as well, certainly. And it, it's something like this. If I expect to be forgiven of my sins from God, if I expect that, how can I not forgive other people? their shortcomings toward me and misunderstanding. So, you know, it's like, yeah, living with a bunch of buttheads, right? People are, you know, like these other terms for that, I suppose. College humor has gotten that rejection before. Oh, you have lots of friends. Oh, yes. And, that, but did you, did you know this person does this? And did you know this person does this? And all these little things that some of them are kind of not such a big deal, but some of these things are the bigger deal that they do that are not so good. Everybody's a, they use a different word, but everybody's a butthead, right? And then they try to convince you that even you, you are the, maybe a butthead because you do this. Call it humor. What can I say? Those guys are never really... How can I put this? They're never really... The sort of folks that... <sighs> tend to be thought of especially well by many in the church... Of, I guess ballpark. Church, ch churches, ballparks. And other folks that don't really enjoy lowbrow humor. But I mentioned this little video that College Humor's put out, I suppose, because I you know it's on some level it's going to be helpful to me to think, oh, we're all just a bunch of buttheads. <laughs> just a question of how much of a butthead we are to each other. <laughs> we're all just, we're all just jerks. We're all just you little hellions, right? We're all little wild beasts running around. And there's the Matrix quote, the fundamental truth which we try to escape, but it oh, keeps going back to us. Is we are completely out of control. <laughs> you know, of course, I'm not French. And I'm not as eloquent as that guy, the Merovingian, but are we completely out of control? Are we all just a bunch of jerks? Are we all very thoughtless? We think about ourselves only. We lie, manipulate, and we never get caught. And we, you know, hey, I never get caught. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I don't know what life is like necessarily after this, after this world. I mean, I, I know that in this life, you know, the good along with the evil are prosperous as well as the good and, and the evil are not. 
It just seems like it's just kind of a crazy, weird world we live in that way. But, you know, I mean, like, I think there will come a point in time where... <laughs> where, um... I think there will come a point in time when some things are uh, a little bit clearer. You know, when we say, oh, um... Maybe I wasn't really that much of a jerk after all. Everybody said I was, but I, but I really wasn't. But why was I written saying I was a jerk? And, you know, maybe some trains of thought aren't especially healthy to go down. Uh, but this life is very unclear. It's very, it's, it's very, it can be very, um, sometimes you could not know what to do. Not know who to trust. You not might not even know what to think of yourself. If you've been told all this stuff about you, see the thing is, yes, no man is an island, no woman is an island. If you keep hearing this crap about you, no matter where it's coming from, <sighs> maybe some of it isn't crap. Maybe some of it's very nice. Maybe some of it's very true. Maybe some of it you just didn't hear the way that other people intended it to be said. Maybe you only wanted to hear what you wanted to hear. But who gives a rip about what other people say about you? Oh, well, we do give a rip because we are social creatures. Right? We care. It's and you know it's it's like an insult to our caring when people don't value us. You know, when we're mistreated. We want to care about other people because that is a part of our humanity. If we didn't care about other people, what would make us what would make us different from demons? Demons don't care about people. And uh there's my point. When you say, Oh, I don't care about anyone well, that's not exactly a great place to be really. But I think it's you know, it's a way of protecting ourselves and it's a way of keeping the riffraff out. Sometimes the riffraff, some people actually think that someone is a bothersome person. In reality, they're not a very good person. I don't know, you know. What do I know, you know? I can't even, I can't even remember everything that was taught to me about Buddhism by some other folks that were Asian. Oh, I should remember, be able to remember everything, right? Incidentally, on that subject, by the way, I'm just wandering here. I I wondered how many of you have actually been inside a Buddhist temple. You see, I have. I have been inside a Buddhist temple. It wasn't a very big one. But it was indeed a Buddhist temple. And you know what? It was pretty cool. And I like the color scheme. I like the golds and the reds and everything. It's very nice. I think a lot of times people are very attracted to Asian religions, for instance, because, well, it's just the whole thing is just so completely different from European <sighs> monotheism. Eventually, there's monotheism, right? Islam, Judaism, Christianity. All the Asian religions are really hmm makes you scratch your chin you don't necessarily have to go to church hey there's no church to go to yay right thinking about good things doing good things getting some exercise what's not to like you know hey you know it's just i guess it's just that um whether or not we are Buddhist or Christ Christian or whatever, uh, my, my train of thought here is we all kind of have experiences in life. Things that are very pleasant or not so pleasant. We all learn from these experiences. We all grow. You become more intelligent, more understanding. Over time, we really do. I mean, it's 
something that's a very good thing. This is one of the reasons why we're meant to be here in this world. To learn to grow and to choose between good and evil. And the thing about being a member of any church or anything or just existing, really, is you can't escape from that purpose of learning and growing and choosing between good and evil. We all have to do that. We all learn. We all experience. We all grow. Or not so much. And we all make decisions that on some level are moral. Decisions between good and evil. And so because of that, some might say, oh, it doesn't really matter what religion you belong to. Some might say, uh, well, you know, it's all just a bunch of hooey, right? Well, you know what? Religion actually is life. There is no distinction, really, because if religion deals with good and evil, good and evil is at the core of life. If you think about it, it's the core of what, um, it's, it's just it's such a key point to the, to everything. Um, or maybe think about it this way, happiness versus misery, happiness versus misery. That's, um, that's everything. That's, that's life. We want happiness. We don't want to be miserable. We're trying to figure out how we can be happy. You know, different religions say all these different things, you know, to help us be happy. Or, or, you know, there's things that people say that, you know, we might believe might help us be happy, but we find out that it doesn't. That's life. That is, that is life. And there's no escaping from it. Uh, so, why do we sometimes like these Asian religions? Well, it's because a lot of religions that from Asia um, focus on these things, these subtopics sometimes in a way that doesn't involve God and Satan. These polar opposites, right? We get to have different stages of enlightenment. We get to have the chakras, right? We get to have to learn about different types of meditation, different body positions you can do. Oh man, I mean it's very great for just thinking outside the box. Right? Some guy I think it was I don't know, some Chinese philosopher. I'm not gonna I remember him saying something like, I th I thought, I had a thought that I was a butterfly. Well, maybe that's why I'm an Indian or Chinese. I might be Chinese. But, you know, whether it was a dream or in real life, I don't know. But I was a butterfly and I flew as far as I could go. And this is the nature I know of somewhat of a lot of the Eastern ways of thinking. It's kind of a, what state of mind are you in? Or state of being. I don't want to say that everybody has different belt colors and that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't know. It sounds like, anyway, <laughs> anyway I'm just saying, <coughs> I love Asia, you know, but it's just, um, well, um, um, some things, in my opinion, really are far more meaty in the, meaning of life kind of thing. Some things really are very, very, very beady. Other things are nice to just have to be kind of a, a break from this, you know, <sighs> thinking about things in life and heavier topics. So, you know, yin and yang. You need to have balance in everything. Do we need to have balance between good and evil? <laughs> like, is it is there a problem if someone tries to be a better person? Is that going to affect the balance? Yin and yang is about male and female genders, right? It's 
not about good and evil, but some people might think it has that kind of connection. Like, uh, well, let's see. So if good, if good, if acting being good, if that, if that actually increases happiness in real life, why the devil would you want to balance that with evil? You just want some, you want to be kind of happy, or do you want to be really happy? Really happy. I think we want to be really happy. We just don't always do what we need to do to get there. And much of the time, it's not really our fault. I mean, I don't know. It is and it isn't. It's, you know, I think sometimes many of us, when we do things that are bad, wrong, we justify it, we rationalize it, and we say, you know, it's not that big of a deal, and, you know, whatever. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I mentioned this before, and it makes a lot of sense. If something actually is morally good, it should actually help us be happier, truly happier. If something is wrong, evil, it's going to make us not happy, miserable. So does a scary movie help us be happy or miserable? <laughs> or are we happy that we watched it? Uh, depends on the nature of the movie. I think if you think about it long enough, something that's exciting exciting or uh, suspenseful thriller thriller type stuff we might enjoy the adrenaline side of it we might enjoy the how much scary images can you take image you know, side of it who's you know are you macho enough to see it we might um we might just enjoy it because it's very different from our mundane lives a lot of times. And maybe a few for other reasons. I don't know. Um, but does a scary movie make us miserable? Well, you know, it's the side of that whole scary thing that um, tends toward very dark and depressed thoughts and um, thinking that we're nothing and we're not worthy and all that stuff. You know, that's, uh, if you see, if, those, if you have those feelings after a silly scary movie, well, that's, I think that's probably something about that movie that wasn't so good. You know, so, you know, it just depends. I mean, like Stephen King's it. I talk about this movie a lot. Um, there's some there's some real deep good and evil in there for sure, but it's um, I think it's just that you know the thing that makes horror horror is is that what it's focusing on and it's focusing on things that are very dark and so that's the that's the main complaint of horror from a moral standpoint because when you think about things that are dark on a very deep level you can become very discouraged and depressed and it can be very, not such a good thing. And so am I saying Disney is the answer to this stuff, scary movies? Um, maybe just something not involving movies. Maybe Disney is certainly better, but depends on the Disney movie. <laughs> um, you know... I just wonder, you know, one of the things that is really great to just talk about in a group discussion is, well, hey, what kinds of activities help you feel better, you know, day-to-day -day basis, you know, and why? I mean, honestly, like, I don't know why in church, for instance, we have to keep talking about Really, really just 
fine. You know, you have Abraham and Lot. And was it or, Lot's wife looked back to Sodom and Gomorrah and turned into salt. And how are we like one of these? I just, look, can we just talk about our lives a little bit more and just say, hey, what things are we doing that help us be happy or not so happy? Just, I mean, like, it's a subject, I've, I've literally just hardly ever had that conversation at church. I think that this is one of the things that drives away a lot of people from church or from a church that is better for their life or a true church, if you want to, you know, believe that, you know, a true church. But it's, it's just not that's meaningful. It's hard to always personalize what people are talking about at church. But yet, if you don't go to these things, you're like, ah, you know. There's a lot of, don't get, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of this really, I see dogmatism in my church. I see dogmatism everywhere, a lot of places. And dogmatism, what is it good for? Well, it's good for, for, for something that's actually bringing you real joy and happiness. Has the Old Testament ever brought me real joy and happiness? And I'll just come out and say it, you know. The Old Testament is old. It's very old, <laughs> but it's a testament of what of the of the Lord, yeah. But it's kind of spread out over a thousand pages or so. I <laughs> I counted the entire King James Bible. I think there's fourteen thousand fifty nine pages or so. The entire King James Bible, and uh, most of it's Old Testament, and a lot of it is. Yep, when oh, when oh, I'm thinking of like a oh, go down Moses song or something. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go, and you know, you just you just if you're hearing if you're in Sunday school, you're hearing this as a boy or a girl, younger especially. And you've been sitting through a big, long church meeting. And it's hot in the South, especially. And, you know, Sunday school. And all you want to do is get home and have that great food. Because you're sick and tired of hearing about Israel and Egypt's land. Let my people go. And then they had the plagues. And I guess that's kind of trying to make it interesting for the kids. Different kinds of plagues. And, you know, it's just... It's just Israel is in the desert, along with Jordan and Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and you have the Nile. And thank goodness for the Nile, because it brings greenery to the area. But let's face it; I mean, like it's just kind of a boring place. The desert is kind of boring, and to make things interesting, they make nice big cities like Dubai. <laughs> I don't know. Dubai is very interesting. Believe me. I'm not saying the desert's ugly. It's just not very eventful. It's not really a whole lot going on in the sand dunes. Um. So, you know, I mean, did God intend church to be boring? Did God intend the Bible to be boring? I think the Bible has a lot of different stuff in it. It does, but it's not exactly Harry Potter or... Uh, pick your favorite novels. I don't know. It's not especially, you know, we hear, hear about it over and over again for entire lives. And I guess there's always enough of it to, oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Oh, the Bible's over a thousand pages. The New Testament is short and it's very, um, much Jesus' words, and then, you know, Peter and Paul and stuff. Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> so it's just, like, the New Testament is fine to read. It's great. It, it, you can't, you don't get tired of Jesus' words, you know, but 
And then I have other scriptures I believe in, you know. It's just that, um, does it any wonder that people get bored at church? Especially when you have some guy droning on about something that you have no interest in. You know, I'm so hungry and what's that smell coming from the kitchen or something? And, oh my gosh, man. It's like, I, seriously, like seriously, folks, when I go to church, I bring something to write on. And I'm not taking notes necessarily, trying to listen. And well, believe me, I'm, I am out a lot of times. I mean, I, I maybe I shouldn't always be this way, but there's a lot of a little bit tedious things that happen at church, and it's not just my church. It's a lot of churches. You can't tell me that Islam. Islam, and you can't tell me that, you know, that prayer stuff you do in mosques is any more interesting. Is this why we turn to Asian religions? Because they're more interesting? Or are they just less black and white, good and evil? And we like that kind of, you know, oh, this is just my spiritual aura is connecting with this, you know, I'm gonna get all mystical and stuff. I don't know. Like we put up with it, I guess, because we think maybe we're gonna be better people for sitting through church and stuff. That's the idea, anyway. Regardless, you know, people will laugh. People will say that's a waste of time. I don't know. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't create the world. I didn't create the way things are. I'm just living in it. Just, you know, there's only so much that I can really do. And what I can do, I'll try to do. And I, I can't always explain to everyone's satisfaction why some things are the way they are. The only thing I can do is help as much as I can. You know, when someone has a existential, I don't know, there's all kinds of different words used to describe different experiences, but if someone has an experience where they actually doubt everything that they believed and they go a different direction entirely, and, you know, that's the kind of thing that can be... Uh, that's not a small matter. That's That's a big thing. And I just have this to say, last thing about, you know, this kind of stuff. When someone tries to um, attack someone's worldview, you know, and it's kind of like this. It's like ripping someone away from their parents in like a Gestapo, like, a, you know, World War Two, And... You might not agree with this, but it's kind of this way. It's more this way. If someone's worldview is actually benign and good, and it's evident that that's the way that those things are, if the grapes are tasting good, if if it's a if it's the tame olive branch, or if it's a good tasting thing. To use these allegories or whatever. If it's if it's a good thing and you destroy someone's good thing, where does that leave you? you know, this is you know, I just The riffraff, you know, just need to be held at bay. And if you know, everybody has to say to themselves I'm going to, if I'm going to talk with Riff Raff, maybe only this person or that person. You know, ignoring people, hmm, it works. It's okay sometimes, I think, but none of us were meant to, none of us were created to be ignored. We just need to be better people, really. All right, catch you guys later. Bye-bye,